WinWedge is an easy-to-use serial data collection utility that is designed to input data from any RS-232 device directly into any Windows program. This video will show you how to configure WinWedge to read in data from a simple measuring instrument directly into an Excel worksheet. In this example, I have a two-axis coordinate measuring instrument connected to the COM7 port on my PC. When I run WinWedge from the Start menu, it opens in Setup mode. The first step to setting up WinWedge is to configure its COM port settings to match the settings for the device connected to your COM port. To do this, I click on the Port menu and then click Settings. I know that my device is plugged into COM7, and from reading its manual, I learned that its communication settings are 9600 baud, no parity, 8 data bits, and 1 stop bit. I choose these settings and click OK. Next, I need to test that I am able to receive data correctly from my device and also determine the structure of the data that the device transmits. To do this, I will click on the Port menu and select the Analyze option. The Analyze window in WinWedge is designed to show you the raw data coming in the serial port from a device and also allow you to send commands out the port to the device. The Input Data text box shows all incoming data and the Output text box is where you would enter data to be sent out the serial port. Many simple serial devices like scales, pH meters, barcode scanners, and digital measuring instruments typically will have a button that you can press on the instrument that will trigger the instrument to transmit a string of data. The measuring instrument that I am using is designed to send me coordinate values when I transmit a question mark out of the serial port to the instrument. I will type a question mark into the output text box, and when I click the Send button in the Analyze window, the device immediately sends back a string of data that appears in the Input Data text box. In my case, I am expecting X and Y measurement values, which is exactly what I am getting. When I examine the data that the device sends, I can see that it transmits two values, separated by commas, with X and Y labels and the units for each value. At the end of the data, I also see two additional characters. The musical note is a carriage return, and the box with a circle in it is a line feed character. Carriage returns and line feeds are commonly used to indicate the end of a string of data. Now that I know everything is working the way it should, and I also have a good understanding of how the data from my instrument is structured, I can close the Analyze window and continue configuring WinWedge to feed the data onto Excel. The next step is to choose how to send data from WinWedge to Excel. WinWedge can send data to other programs either by simulating keystrokes or using a feature of Windows called Dynamic Data Exchange, or DDE. In this example, I will demonstrate the Keystroke mode. To do this, I click on the Mode menu and choose the Send Keystrokes To option. When I do this, a window opens where I can specify which application I want WinWedge to send the data to. The default parameters are set to send all the data to the Notepad program. To have WinWedge send the data to Excel, I will enter Excel for the Title Bar Text option and delete everything from the Command Line option and click the OK button to close the window. The next step is to configure WinWedge to parse the two coordinate values that I am receiving from my measurement instrument so that the values get written to separate columns in Excel. To do this, I will open the Define menu and select the Input Data Record Structure option. Now a series of windows will appear where I can define the structure of the data I will be receiving so that WinWedge can parse and filter the data so that it will appear the way that I want in Excel. The first window allows me to define the events that determine the start and end of each data record my device sends. In this example, my device is sending data records that all end with a carriage return line feed pair, so I will select any character received for the start of record event, and also choose carriage return or CRLF received for the end of record event. This tells WinWedge to start reading in data when the first character comes in the port and read in everything until a carriage return or carriage return line feed is received. When I click the Continue button, I am prompted to select the Input Record Structure. Because my device is sending data records back that contain two data fields that are separated or delimited by commas, I will select the option Each Data Record Contains Multiple Delimited Data Fields and click the Continue button. The next window asks me to select the delimiter character and also specify the maximum number of data fields that will appear in each data record. I will select the comma as the delimiter and also specify that there are two data fields in each record and click the Continue button. When I do this, the Input Record Definition Editor window appears. This final window is where I tell WinWedge how to deal with the individual fields in each data record, as well as what keystrokes to add before or after each data field so that the data is fed correctly into Excel. The first data field coming from my device contains non-numeric data that I do not want sent to Excel along with the numeric values. 
so I will set the filter option for field 1 to Numeric Data Only. I also know that after WinWedge types the data for the first data field into Excel, I want the cursor to tab over to the next cell, so I click my mouse in the Field Post Amble Keystrokes box and click on the Keystroke List button. In the Keystroke List window, I select the Tab keystroke and click OK. For the second field, I know that I want numeric data only, but after the data is entered in Excel, I want to return the cursor to the original column, but the next row down. To accomplish this, I need to add several keystrokes. In this case, I will add a down arrow keystroke and then a left arrow keystroke to the postamble keystrokes for field number 2. At this point, I am finished defining how I want WinWedge to parse and filter the data from my device, so I will click the OK button to return to the main WinWedge setup window. Because my device requires me to send it a command to trigger it to send back a data record, I will define a hotkey that will send the required command out the serial port to the device. To do this, I will open the Define menu and select Hotkeys and Hotkey Actions option. WinWedge will allow you to define up to 50 hotkeys that you can use to either send data out the serial port or control the operation of WinWedge. In this example, I will define a single hotkey that transmits the question mark command out the serial port whenever I press function key F9 on my keyboard. For the hotkey action, I will select Transmit String, and then put my cursor in the hotkey keystroke text box and press function key F9 on my keyboard. Finally, I will type in the question mark in the output string text box and click the OK button to return to the main menu. At this point, WinWedge is completely configured to work the way that I want so I'll go to the File menu and save my WinWedge configuration file onto my desktop using the file name Measurements to Excel F9. By saving my WinWedge configuration, I will not have to go through these setup steps again the next time I want to input data from my device. I am now ready to test my WinWedge configuration. To do this, I open the Activate menu and select the Test Mode option. When I do this, the activated window of WinWedge appears, showing me the two fields that I configured in WinWedge. I will now open an Excel document I created earlier with the columns labeled X and Y. I click my cursor into cell A2 and press function key F9 on my keyboard. When I do this, WinWedge sends the question mark out of the serial port to the instrument, which immediately returns the data containing the X and Y values. WinWedge then reads in the data, parses it into the two separate data fields, and finally types the data into Excel exactly the way I want, with the two values being sent to two columns. Each time I press the F9 hotkey, I will receive back a new set of data from the instrument. As you can see, WinWedge makes it very easy to take data from any RS-232 instrument, 